Hi all, I'm Marco Matic. I'm an augmented reality, virtual reality artist and animator. Unfortunately, due to lockdown, I can only make it there virtually, but I'm still excited to show you a bit of my processes and workflow uh, through this presentation. So let's get started. So let's go back. I probably describe myself as a self-taught illustrator, animator and developer. And I've always had a fascination with uh, stepping back from the subject matter, whether it be society or machinery or, or creatures or whatever it may be, I've always had a fascination for the inner workings and details of how things, I guess, functioned and operated. And to this day, I still have that fascination and curiosity about the world. So when I see subject matter, um, whether, whatever it might be, I try to imagine how it operates um, but I guess in a, a different cosmic and quirky uh, sense. I still illustrate to this day and a lot of the hand-drawn sketches that I create uh, are heavily incorporated into my digital work. Um, while illustration is great and it, it's great for getting ideas out there, um, I still wasn't satisfied and I wanted to try and push the boundaries a bit by combining you know, analog mediums with, with animation and, uh, and other mediums out there. I guess it wasn't until I discovered augmented reality a few years ago that I realised how far I could push the boundaries with my existing work. Around 2016 I started dabbling with um, AR and VR technologies. Um, at first it was all experimental, um, had no idea what I was doing, so I started playing with my illustrations and tried bringing them to life. And uh, back then it was, it was exciting, it was really exhilarating to see, you know, those fine details spring to life from the paper in front of the audiences. But it wasn't enough and that's when I started combining uh, my illustrated works with 3D um, 3D models and 3D animations. And that's where things really clicked. You know, the ability to just make something come out of the canvas rather than have it flat and allow audiences to intimately engage and explore the work. That was a huge game changer for me. And I knew I wanted to pursue um, this field even further. At the time, there weren't a lot of um, you know, artists dabbling in this field, especially in this particular style. So I thought I could continue down this path. And I went, went even further, going much more complex and sophisticated, you know, breaking apart machinery into several hundred components and then reassembling them together. That's what fascinated me. And the applications of this, this particular technique um, extended way beyond art, not just for art itself, but you know, for other fields like engineering or education. Because of its limitless possibilities, I did go off on a few tangents. Um, firstly, exploring portals, um, creating a sense of depth within the artwork itself. Even bringing statues and sculptures to life in, in um, at various parks and attractions in Victoria. To even activating things like merchandise and posters. So working with organisations like Creative Victoria and Adobe to uh, bring these static illustrations and artworks to life. I also made a shirt that I took to the United States and I, I, uh, I never got that back ever again. Despite all that work being initially experimental, it led me to a lot of opportunities um, down the track, working with you know, various tech companies and universities and institutions to actually visualize some really interesting subject matter. So things from you know, smart cities to Industry 4.0, um, to, to how factories work, to how machines work, that to me was quite fascinating. And through augmented reality, it was almost uh, a great way to cross over education with entertainment. And nowadays, with, with AR and VR technologies, we have this fusion of entertainment that's gaining more prominence um, as immersive tech becomes, becomes more widely available. With the scope of work coming in, I, I, I didn't really think much of it at first, but then I realized that, you know, augmented reality content out there has tended to feel, you know, cold and clunky and disconnected. And I guess that's where I kind of had this advantage because I was able to create some sort of sense of charm and um, 
utilize an, an aesthetic that was uh, deeply mine because I had control of the illustrations, I had control of the textures. And it, it was exciting because you know, clients wanted charming, engaging and interactive content and that's what I could provide. So I've, to this day I still continue building these um, various immersive experiences, but with the in mind that it has to have that painterly illustrated aesthetic. So 2020 happened and uh, I think things went down the toilet for a lot of people, um, including myself. A lot of plans and projects had fallen through and um, you know, I was a bit stuck. And you know, crypto art, at first I didn't quite understand it and you know, was honestly skeptical, but you know, understanding how blockchain technology enabled artists to authenticate um, you know, ownership of their work, it, it, it became a game changer to me. And last year alone, um, you know, at first I wasn't sure if there'd be any, any interest in my work, but um, you know, I've made so much from the crypto art community, from the, the collectors and investors that have shown interest in my, my pieces that um, I've decided to, I guess, go full time this year to see how far I can push these boundaries. The ability to authenticate digital assets doesn't just apply to uh, crypto art, it can apply to um, you know, 3D objects, uh, wearable items, um, uh, virtual reality sculptures, and it can apply to any, any type of digital asset. Um, and that's what I found quite fascinating. So I've been <clears throat> working across Maker's Place, Super Rare, Known Origin, creating these crypto artworks and you know, seeing these sales at first, you know, it was, it was mind boggling. And then I started diving into Decentraland and, um, you know, VR chat, you know, building virtual reality galleries. You know, the ability to, to showcase a virtual reality, um, you know, piece of art and sell that, that's, that's, that's mind blowing. And so, COVID has really forced a lot of uh, people to, to work from home, especially digital creators. And I think that's, that comes to them quite naturally being able to work remotely. And what's really exciting is that it's created this community of, um, of investors and collectors and artists that get together and, and collaborate, not just you know, online on Discord, but in virtual reality spaces. And you know, I think that's fantastic. It's absolutely magical um, what people are doing. Last year, I was part of multiple, um, you know, crypto-driven uh, festivals and events. Decentraland had their fashion show. Burning Man had their um, their event gone virtual, where you burnt 3D sculptures. So my visual style is very much a mix between illustrative, analog mediums and uh, digital uh, media. And what I do with augmented reality, I also apply that into virtual reality as well. My process is, most of the time it starts off on paper. So everything I do is illustrated in a modular fashion. So I carefully lay out all the objects and assets that I'm going to model with, almost like a Meccano set. So I illustrate it and add ink wash to render the drawings. Then what I do is I scan that in onto the computer, add some coloring. Then I splice them up to turn them into textures for my 3D models. So a lot of my models are made um, through Gravity Sketch. For those who aren't aware of what the Gravity Sketch is, it's a virtual reality modeling and sculpting tool um, available to use via Oculus or HTC Vive headsets. And it's a great way for quickly iterating and prototyping um, 3D models. And I use that as a foundation to build um, all my assets for um, the 3D. So when I'm done with that, I then bring it into Blender to create skeletal rigs that allows me to essentially animate um, animate my characters or creations. I then use my illustrated textures um, to wrap around my 3D models and that's how I sort of color, um, color my models, trying to keep and preserve that illustrated aesthetic um, as much as possible and it's the most optimal way of, of doing it, at least for me. So it's, it's quite a, uh, a standard process, it might look quite uh, intimidating at first, but once you have that process down pat, it's it's really just um, 
rinse and repeat. So everything's modeled in Gravity Sketch, then brought into Blender, where I then apply my illustrated textures. I then go into animation based on the rig I've created. Animation is also a really important um, feature to, to my creations. I want to add as much life and movement as possible to my scenes, as much detail as possible. So the illustrations are a great way to capture that detail, but animation is, is still quite important. As part of Future Art, I've created these two massive scale creations that have been minted on the Superware platform and are uh, currently up for auction. Big shout out to Dave Good and Sats Moon for organizing Future Art. I know this is the first time event, but it's been such an amazing opportunity to be part of this movement. So I really appreciate it. Also, the big shout out to the crypto art community for backing and being behind this event, despite being from all different parts of the world. It's really amazing to see what everyone's creating in the crypto art space. So cheers. Also, one more thing, if you haven't already, feel free to check out the Moving Marvel's Augmented Reality Art Collection, which is on display at Paddington Town Hall. Download the app Moving Marvels for free and feel free to, to bring the artworks to life.